in what may become one of the most significant transformations in Indo-Russian defense relations in over a decade, senior Russian officials have revealed that the joint development of an Indian variant of the Su-57E under a revived FGFA program is once again on the table. But the proposal goes far beyond merely restarting an old project. Moscow is signaling that this could become the gateway to a much deeper, long-term partnership that includes potential co-development of sixth-generation fighter aircraft, future stealth bombers, and advanced unmanned technologies. If pursued, this could redefine the next generation of India's aerial warfare capabilities. Russian officials have stated that Moscow is ready to take a two-track approach to accelerate India's entry into stealth aviation. On one track, Russia is prepared to supply two to three complete squadrons of Su-57E stealth fighters directly off the shelf, giving the Indian Air Force immediate access to fifth-generation combat capability. On the other track, Russia is willing to allow the local production of the Su-57E in India, laying the foundation for large-scale domestic manufacturing and future upgrades. This dual offer reflects Russia's attempt to strengthen defense industrial ties with India at a time when global defense aviation competition is intensifying, and countries seek reliable long-term partners. Moscow has also highlighted that its future aviation roadmap includes multiple advanced programs that go far beyond the Su-57 or Su-75. While Russian officials did not disclose classified details, they confirmed that several global powers are already developing sixth-generation fighters, with early prototypes expected around 2035. These aircraft are expected to feature directed energy weapons, AI-enabled mission systems, long-range sensor fusion, adaptive cycle engines, and seamless manned unmanned teaming. Russia intends to remain a major player in this race and believes India has the technological ambition, financial capacity, and operational experience to become a credible co-developer in these future projects. India's earlier withdrawal from the original FGFA program had stemmed from concerns regarding cost escalation, delays in development, and insufficient transparency in stealth and avionics technologies. At that time, India felt the Su-57 design had not matured enough to justify joint investment. But the global and regional security environment has changed considerably. India is now investing heavily in indigenous advanced aerospace programs like AMCA, GATAC UCAV, and long-range strike platforms, which require deeper access to high-end technologies such as low observable design, advanced composites, data fusion software, and engine technology. Thus, the renewed FGFA proposal now places much greater emphasis on design participation, intellectual property access, and mission systems development, areas India considers essential for strategic autonomy. If New Delhi decides to approve the Su-57E air-based FGFA revival, it could become the backbone for a new wave of co-development projects. These may include future sixth-generation air dominance platforms. Long-range stealth strike aircraft, advanced swarm-enabled unmanned systems, and even strategic bomber technologies, an area in which India has never previously collaborated. This approach would mirror the success of the BrahMos missile program, where joint development not only provided India world-class capability but also created a strong industrial foundation with long-term benefits. On the subject of the Su-75 Checkmate, Russian officials confirmed that the aircraft is progressing steadily toward its first flight in 2026. The Su-75 is designed as a lightweight, single-engine stealth fighter with a takeoff weight of around 26 tons, making it larger than many competitors but still cost-efficient. Russia intends to market the Su-75 as a disruptive alternative to Western fifth-generation fighters like the F-35, offering similar networked warfare capability at nearly half the cost. Its modular internal architecture, open-source-style software interface, lower maintenance footprint, and proposed optionally unmanned variant make it appealing to cost-sensitive nations seeking stealth capability without Western political limitations. Several countries are already discussing not only purchasing the fighter but also participating in local manufacturing partnerships, an approach Russia hopes to replicate with India as well. The timing of Russia's proposal is particularly important. India is expanding its defense ties with multiple countries, including France for the Rafale, the United States for UAVs and helicopter technologies, and Japan for semiconductor and dual-use aerospace cooperation. Yet, 
Despite this diversification, Russia remains one of the few partners consistently willing to share sensitive technologies such as engines, hypersonic systems, and long-range air defense platforms. By offering access to its most ambitious aviation programs, including sixth-generation fighters and future bombers, Russia is signaling that it wants India as a long-term strategic collaborator rather than simply a buyer. India now faces a complex decision. On one hand, entering a next-generation fighter program early offers immense advantages in learning, manufacturing, and long-term strategic capability. On the other hand, India must balance these opportunities with the realities of budget constraints, parallel indigenous projects like AMCA, and the challenges of integrating foreign technologies with local systems. But what is clear is that Moscow has made its most far-reaching and ambitious pitch to India in many years. The choices New Delhi makes in the coming months could shape the future of Indo-Russian air power cooperation for the next 30 years.